Good morning, Trinity. Thank you for being here this morning. Happy August. Woo! <laughs> it's really glad, uh, I'm really glad to have you here. It's good to have you here, especially also those who are seeing us live or also on our recording at some time this week. We're really grateful that you have been here uh, and are here. Uh, a couple of things before we begin. Um, <clears throat> there have been some questions since things are, I don't know what even to say anymore. For right now, and at least until you hear otherwise, like much of our area, we continue to be mask optional. If you want to, great, no problem. If you don't want to, that's okay too. If you feel like this is still too much of a risk and you want to be home, we're still doing the online stuff and the recording, so feel free. But we're monitoring this every day, and so as things change, you will be informed. But for right now, it's up to you. You've probably heard by now um, that Jim Ribbick entered into eternal life this past week. His funeral will be here at Trinity on Tuesday at 10 here in the sanctuary. Also, as you entered, if you entered through this lobby, uh, you noticed that we have a school kit drive uh, happening, and you have an opportunity to uh, make a, a gift to that drive if you wish. Um, all the information's down there. Believe it or not, Rock Island starts tomorrow. <laughs> Kids are back in school tomorrow. So watch it while you're driving. Uh, Moline goes back in about two weeks uh, from tomorrow. So watch your, your driving and all of that again because there will be all sorts of little ones moving uh, to and fro uh, beginning tomorrow morning. Um, I also want to say a thank you. I see Jane Teej is here and Ruth Stewart is here. If you were on our interview team for the youth and family position, just raise your hand. I know there's a few of you. Oh, Dave Moyman, right? Sal oh, Sally there. Didn't see you back there. Let's thank them because that is... That is our next announcement. Um, today is Debbie's first day. She's working. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> Good morning. I'm wearing a mask today because I have a little cold, but it's good to meet everyone. You can tell them anything you want. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to start this journey with all of you, and um, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And my only request is that you just keep me um, in your prayer that God will just help me in this ministry and help me discern what he wants for me to do here. So I'm thankful, and I look forward to getting to know everyone. And one big question I've gotten over the last week or two is, could you pronounce your last name so everybody yes, has it? Yes, I know. Uh, it's, it's a conundrum, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Kuhn. Okay, so if you break it down, it's K-U-N, so Kuhn. Uh, K. And if you get it wrong, I, it, it's okay. I won't be offended at all. You can call me Debbie K. It doesn't matter. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Thank you. Yeah. So You're Debbie's welcome. office is going to be right next to Karen Anderson, okay, where Patty Tillman was sitting. She's going to get going right away tomorrow morning. Um, I would ask that you give her about two or three days. We have a very scripted opening for her, and she needs to get things like email and uh, the computer going and, and all of that stuff in at least the first two days, but expect her to be reaching out very soon after that. 
Okay? okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So I invite you to please rise as you're able, and we will offer our confession to God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let's sing together our first hymn. Pray to the Lord. 
Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am your, the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God, word of life. Please read the uh, bold-faced verses responsibly with me. 
So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided food for them, food enough. raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled for God gave them what they craved. A reading from Ephesians. I there, I therefore, a prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is only, there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive, he gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one, same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for their work and ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and, on, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness, in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, word of life. This is the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him 
that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, we must, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered him, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he, was, who he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I invite any of our young people forward. Come on up if you wish. Hi, guys. Does school start tomorrow for you guys? No. No? Oh, oh, you start in three weeks. Okay. A little more summer. Good deal. Oh, hi, guys. Come on up. Does school start for you tomorrow? No. Okay, good. Oh, everybody's got a little summer left yet. Well, when it does, I want you to think about this. If you heard the readings that we just had, you heard two very important things. The first thing is God saying, Ugh, I've heard you're complaining. You guys ever complain about anything? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I, I appreciate your honesty. That's good. Yeah, like sometimes you just, ugh. Something just isn't good and you just complain, right? And then the lesson, the second lesson that we heard from Paul, he said, it's time for us to grow up. Now, what do we make of those two things? Well, don't grow up. (laughs) Not yet. There will be plenty of time for that. It, w- it will come in its own time. Enjoy being a kid. While well, you still can, exactly. <laughs> but, right, when you get to school, here's what God and Jesus are asking you to do. Not so much complaining, but a little bit more growing up and making good decisions, right? Right, no, no time travel, is that what you said? Yeah, if you can do that, let me know, <laughs> right? So these lessons today are perfect as we think about going to school because who likes to listen to that kid in the class who does nothing but complain? Yeah, nobody likes that. So you don't want to be that kid. But try as best you can to make good decisions. Because what Paul was telling his church in that lesson we heard was, come on, everybody, we can do a good job. We can be smart. We can make good decisions. And we can make sure that the things that we're trying to do in our church actually happen. Right? And that takes a little growing up but you don't have to grow all the way yet. You got time, okay? So when school starts and you hit that classroom and you're all ready to go, I just want you to think a little growing up, just a little, enough for good decisions, okay? Brilliant, thank you. 
can go back to your seats. the Olympics, right? I don't know about you, but I have not had enough table tennis, <laughs> fencing, or badminton. All this swimming and running over and over and over again, Whew, back and forth and back and forth. Give me some table tennis, <laughs> but I don't think I'm getting it. Why? Because Americans don't win medals in table tennis, <laughs> and so NBC is not spending the money on table tennis. Oh, on USA? Brilliant, if I only had cable. <laughs> so track and field has begun. They've done a few events, but this is, the, this is the running around in circles week, as opposed to swimming back and forth week. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, a guy named Joe Dispenza, interesting guy. And he, he used an example that I want to use with you today. So far as we can tell, you know, because for much of hu human time, we weren't measuring such things. But so far as we can tell, it took us until 1954, humans I mean, Roger Bannister, to break the four minute mile, you know, the four minute mark in the mile. Now that's a long time. Now perhaps somebody had run it faster, they were being chased by a bull or something, and they ran it faster. But in terms of actually measuring it, we count May of 1954 as the moment that that sort of magical barrier was passed. Now, could humans have done that speed up to that point? It's, I mean, probably, but that's when it happened. But what's remarkable about that moment is after May of 1954, the four-minute mile was no longer a magical barrier. And in fact, in the several weeks and months and years after, it seemed like everybody was running <laughs> under four minutes. There were high school kids shortly thereafter. It took us another about 30 years or so, no, I'm sorry, 20 years, until the mid-70s to hit the three-minute 50 mark. And today, the world record in the mile, and who knows, maybe that'll change this week. Today, the world record is 3 minutes and 43 seconds. Now, if you've ever run a mile, <laughs> for whatever reason, you will know that that's fast. But here's the interesting question, I think. From 1954 until 1999 when that 343 was set. Okay. That's about 40, what, 46 years. Did humans evolve so rapidly in those 46 years that all of a sudden we were able to do something that before that was thought to be unthinkable? No. <laughs> That's not how evolution works. <laughs> it's science. <laughs> we can make some advances in, you know, working out and diet and things like that, but for the most part, we don't evolve in a revolutionary way <laughs> that quickly. So something had to change. Was it the track surface? Could have been. Was it the wind? Was it better shoes? Uh, probably all of those things contributed a little bit. But do you know what contributed the most? We believed it could be done. 
once that barrier was crossed, we believed, not just individually, but collectively as a society, we believed that that was no longer a barrier. Now, not too long after 1954, when we began to ran, run faster and faster, we did something even more remarkable, and most of you probably remember it. We put people in space. <laughs> and we brought them back. <laughs> it wasn't a one-way trip. <laughs> right? All because a young man who happened to be president said, I believe in this decade we can do it. I'm not sure we have visionaries like that right now, or at least not publicly. <laughs> but we did it in the space of a decade with technology that we now laugh at. If it was your phone, you'd throw it away. <laughs> Why? Because we believed that we could do it. Right around the same time that we were hitting the 350 barrier in the mile, we were launching a satellite that was supposed to just look at Jupiter. And now it's beyond the solar system. And still sending back pictures with technology that old. Why? Because we believed we could. And even when we weren't sure, we believed it anyways. Even when we thought, oh, maybe it'll work, let's see. <laughs> we did it. Now, those Israelites that Brian read about in the first lesson <laughs> were not doing a great job at belief. Why did you bring us into the wilderness? <laughs> well, we should all, we wish we should have stayed in Egypt. We had bread there. I can only imagine God saying, look, here's the bread. You've brought, already brought the wine. <laughs> why? 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 And do you know what God's response? Well, you should. You just heard it. Do you know what God's response was to their whining? He gave them more. Not less. He didn't say, stop whining, then I'll give you food. But he heard their complaining. He heard what they wanted. What they were crying out for. What their experience had brought to them. And his response to them was abundance. Not punishment. Not withholding. It was abundance out of love. And ironically, they, they just kept whining over the years. <laughs> this, that, and the other thing. And ironically, God kept saying, here, <laughs> when are you going to get that I love you? When are you going to get that everything I've given you is enough? <laughs> Paul had a remedy, of course. You know, Paul knows these scriptures. And Paul says something that I only noticed this week, really, for the first time. He says, grow up in every way. Today we might say, get over yourself. <laughs> grow up, Paul says, in every way. You have been given gifts. In the case of the Israelites, you have been given the gift of freedom and you have been given food, quail, manna. In Paul's case, he says, look, you have been given gifts, you have been given all sorts of good stuff. You, you, if you're going to be a community, grow up. 
He's kind of firm. And both God and Paul are saying in these lessons, believe it can happen and it will. Believe what I tell you and you will see wonders. Now in a modern context. Does this sound familiar, Lutherans? Our churches are getting so old. It's just old people. When are the young people going to come? We've worked so hard all these years. When is someone new going to come and do it? We're tired. Those young people in their soccer games. You know, if they weren't on Sunday, our church would be full of young people. (laughs) Right. Sound familiar? Our entire ELCA, in fact, most of Protestantism, is crying out for manna is crying out for food, crying out to be fed by God. And God keeps saying, there it is. Next time we're we're, 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 uh, uh, attempted to complain, right? (laughs) Next time we're tempted to have that attitude like the Israelites of lack, not enough. I want you to hold in your mind very, very, very carefully, because I'm going to hold it in my mind. These four boys who were just up here about ten minutes ago. God is already sending us manna. And if we look at these four boys, those four boys, as not enough, then it will always be not enough. Because in our minds, we don't believe. But God says to us instead, if those are the only four boys ever, that's a treasure. I don't believe that it will be only four. Because Debbie's going to fix everything. (laughs) Right? That's what you promised, right? (laughs) But you see what I'm getting at? We have to say today, August 1st, 2021, we have to say today, the very first day of Debbie's working with us, we have to say today we believe and act accordingly. As Paul says, Debbie has gifts, I have gifts, Norlene has gifts, John has gifts, Dave has gifts, you all have gifts, bring them. It's time to bring them. (laughs) You're not done. Sorry. (laughs) Bring them. Whatever it might be. And you might not think it's a big deal what your gifts are, but they are. Because they're manna. They're not just gifts. They're what sustains this body. Bring your manna. But most importantly, Believe that our future includes young kids and their parents and their grandparents. Because here's the other problem. When we say, oh, the church is so old. You know what really that's saying? That's saying, Marilyn, you're not important anymore, which is a lie. Okay, you're not important anymore which is a lie. You're as important as you've ever been because your manna 
So the age doesn't matter if we believe what God says to us. That every person in this room and every person that's not in this room soon, because remember, Debbie's going to fix everything. (laughs) We're not going to be able to do it individually. We have to live now. The past was great, and there's a lot of good stuff that we can take from it, and we're going to take the best from it. And you're going to teach her what that best stuff was. The future's unwritten. Doesn't matter. Maybe somebody will run under 340 someday. Doesn't matter, because they didn't do it today. (laughs) Future doesn't matter. We can't control it. We can't see it. But... We can dream it. We can envision it. Like the people of Israel did, thinking that they would someday be out of Egypt. Like Paul's people did when they dreamed that someday the Lord would come again. Like we can dream and believe that today is the day that we say no to negativity, that we say no to complaining, that we say no to anything that gets in our way. And let, as the famous song says, let Jesus take the wheel. (laughs) That's the path forward. So the truth is, it's not dependent on Debbie. It's not dependent on me. It's not dependent on any one of you. It's dependent on us. And when we collectively believe, church people call it faith, when we collectively believe, there is no telling how fast we can run. Amen.
words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, bring us together and restore the unity of faith. Hear us, O oh God. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests, defend species of risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O oh God. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking, seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those with, who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from a heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O oh God. You receive all who come to you, seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection, to those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere. Prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Today we especially remember Jim Ribbick. Lord, sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with Jim and all the saints to feast together at your heavenly banquet. Your mercy is great. Uh, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these in all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, 
and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in We share this meal, this manna, because it was first shared with us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To the extent to which you feel comfortable, I invite you to share peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
I invite you to please rise as you're able. <clears throat> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray, Jesus, bread of life we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Till we meet again, my good counsels. 
Remind you too that our organ repair continues and uh, check the newsletter. Uh, Chan has a piece in there with some pictures also of everything that's been, that's been happening. Um, he assures me that everything's going great, right? Perfect. Okay. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Grow in God. Serve in the Spirit. Thanks be to God.